Hello everyone, and welcome back to Modern Warships with Terry. Today, we are going to look at submarines, and more precisely, at the Project 945, the Barracuda. This is a Sierra-class submarine, and these were Soviet-era uh, nuclear attack submarines, so their sole purpose was to go and hunt down other submarines. Now, the whole problem with the attack submarines kind of started by it was started by the Germans and it's not that the Germans actually invented those but what the Germans did invent in the Second World War were the Type 21 submarines which um, all the hype aside were actually more modern than most of the other things that the other nations had around the Germans didn't get to use them because they had to rush them into production and they weren't very weren't very well made there were some design problems but still it was a pretty good design that would lay the groundwork for future submarines now, the problem was that after the war, both the Americans and the Soviets got their hand on Type 21 submarines, which means that the Americans rightfully assumed that the Soviets would do the same thing that they did, take the design apart and use it to build more advanced submarines. So the Americans had predicted that by the 1960s, the Soviets would have at best hundreds, at worst thousands of submarines based on this design. So the whole problem then became, okay, we're going to need a submarine to counter submarines, uh, which wasn't something that happened during the Second World War very much, but uh, afterwards became more of, of a theme. And that's where this is, this is the kind of the groundwork for the design, what we get on the, on the Barracuda. Now, the, uh, the Sierra 1 was the first design. These things were made out of a completely ti complete titanium hull and at the time were superior to what the, uh, what the Americans had uh, floating or, or rather sinking around because she could dive, deep, uh, dive deeper and uh, could outmaneuver a lot of things. So um, these things actually still exist today. And while there have been successors, there are still, uh, still Sierra-class submarines around and there's actually a discussion of re uh, refitting them with cruise missiles. But this, this is still the original configuration. This thing doesn't have any cruise missiles. It only has torpedoes. There are three more submarines in Tier 2. There's a Chinese submarine, which does have cruise missiles. There's the USS Seawolf, which is a more, uh, a more recent or more advanced uh, nuclear attack submarine, which does get two torpedoes and a cruise missile launcher. And there's the Kursk, which is, well, which doesn't exist anymore because it sunk, tragically but uh, also gets two torpedo launchers and the missile battery. But the Barracuda is still in her original Soviet configuration as a pure attack submarine. Right, so, um, torpedoes. There are two kinds of torpedoes in the game. There are the slow, reasonably hard-hitting torpedoes. Actually, let's go over here, yeah. So we do have, we do have a s slow, hard-hitting torpedo, which is a homing torpedo. So you fire it at the enemy and then forget about it. And we have a much, much faster supercavitating torpedo, which doesn't hit quite as hard, but and has a more limited homing ability. So you get the choice between better homing, harder hit, and uh, much worse angles, because you, you can fire the homing torpedoes from any, any direction, whereas the supercavitating one, you can only fire them from a certain distance, and you can only fire them forwards. Now, originally uh, the submarine came with both. I've replaced them with uh, I've replaced them with two of the homing torpedoes just because I like these better. The supercavitating ones take a little bit of work to to figure out how to use them, and they are absolutely useless in a close range brawl because you can't aim them at a ship that is too close. Still, the one thing that um, that submarines are very very good at in this game is uh, is anti-carrier warfare. So the submarines are, in a way, the hard counter to carriers, because carriers themselves usually have rather limited anti-submarine warfare capabilities. The same goes for for uh, for guided missile destroyers like the Ali Burke, for example, which only which can only use her helicopter. Submarines that are submerged can't be hit by missiles, obviously. They can, however, be hit by torpedoes, by things like the uh, mortars or grenade launchers that some of the destroyers are, are shipping, and by other submarines especially. Uh, and that's kind of also what this thing is for. So the whole submarine uh, the whole submarine story and, and 
section of the game is very, very different from the surface warfare aspect. And uh, that's why I figured let's uh, take a quick look. Now, before we get into a battle, one last thing, uh, one last mechanic I need to explain here, also in terms of, of upgrades. Uh, submarines have an O2 capacity, which of course is rather ridiculous given that these were nuclear submarines, which had unlimited O2 capacity by just literally recycling the air and uh, having not having to take on fuel for years and years. But um, in-game there's an O2 capacity mechanic, which means that as soon as your, your oxygen runs out, you need to surface. And when you're on the surface, you can very, very much can be hit by missiles and everything else that tends to fly around there. So you really, really want to upgrade that first <laughs> because in stock, these things are pretty useless unless their O2 capacity gets upgraded. All right, now let's move on to some gameplay. In the first battle, we are in Greenlands. And one thing that you got to take into account when sailing in a submarine, besides the O2 capacity, is that the underwater world is very much existing as well. And you can ground the submarine or run into islands and stuff. So the very first thing you want to do is not dive because your O2 capacity is limited and it recharges slowly while you're on the surface. If you completely deplete it, you will need to surface until it's, you'll be forced to surface until it's completely recharged, which isn't going to happen inside the game. So you basically permanently surface. So as long as you're not spotted and nobody can shoot at you, you can very much uh, just, you know, stay on the surface and preserve your two. Uh, I, I generally start uh, diving as soon as I'm being spotted because it takes a little bit of time and any missiles that are fired in your direction are already dangerous. Now we don't have any kind of carriers here. We have one enemy sub, uh, two destroyers and two corvettes or frigates. So now I'm spotted, which, uh, but nobody seems to be shooting at me quite yet. Uh, but there, there I see... Um, I see a destroyer and I'm immediately going to dive. And there's a torpedo coming my way as well, so the enemy sub is around there too. There come some shots in, they're coming in too late. Now, uh, when it comes to torpedo dodging, what you want to do, because the torpedoes have sort of like a limited angle, um, you want to go broadside onto the torpedo and then radically change your speed. And if you've seen it, um, my torpedoes have hit, but the enemy torpedoes have sailed by because I, have, I am moving forwards and backwards. Uh, to dodge these torpedoes and uh, while at the same time uh, getting my own homing torpedoes out against the sea wolf over there and uh, he doesn't know how to dodge torpedoes by the looks of it so that's the thing now you can't see very much here and that's because uh, underwater and there I actually got hit by a torpedo that I didn't notice underwater uh, uh, you rely on the sonar to ping occasionally your surroundings you see that green ping going off in the distance there? That's the only way how you can see your surroundings. Now I'm surfacing here because uh, I'm just checking if anybody wants to shoot at me. Everybody's shooting at me, so I'm immediately diving again uh, and uh, in time to not be hit by missiles. <laughs> but uh, yes, you, you do have to watch out for your surroundings. For example, there's an island on my left and I can't really see that island unless the ping goes. There it goes and you can see where, where the... Um, you, you can see where things are around you, so you don't run into them, because you will take damage if you're running into islands. This, this makes submarine uh, gameplay actually a bit challenging at times, because you do need to watch out uh, where you are sailing, and not to run into stuff, unless you're in a storm map where there's relatively little stuff to run into. But it also gives you, um, actually there's the sinking independence, go watch out not to hit that thing, because you very much take damage from hitting wrecks of sinking ships when you're in a submarine. Uh, yeah, so um, you do you, you have some interesting opportunities, for example, on Arctic, where there are some gaps and nooks and crannies that you can wedge your submarine into that you can't easily get into with a surface ship. But you see, my O2 is depleting, but we've we've already won. Uh, there's only one enemy ship left, so I'm I don't think we're going to lose this still. But I'm still trying to get into range. Obviously, my torpedoes can't lock on because the ship's behind an island. So I'm surfacing just to take a look around and see where I am. And he's immediately shooting at me. And since my since I don't have time to uh, to to dive in before the, the rockets hit, I'm actually using the uh, the chaff here. Now you can fire the chaff underwater. It doesn't make any sense, but you can. But uh, don't bother. It does not going to work on torpedoes. So for torpedo dodging, you have to do the thing of um, giving broadside to the torpedo and then uh, changing direction very quickly. It doesn't always work, but uh, in this case, it was enough. 
let's uh, let's do a second one to show you what I mean with uh, counter against aircraft carriers. And here we are on Storm in a battle. Um, and we'll, we'll see if there's uh, if we got any enemy carriers. Storm has a lot of open well open ground really, so it's it's much less difficult to uh, to to sail into stuff. And yes, there's a carrier on the enemy team. We're spawning on the left with the, the three sides, and there are two carriers are spawning on the right. So there's three ships on the right on the enemy side and two ships over here. It's always something to take into account. And once again, um, carriers can carriers can hurt you very badly while you're on the surface. So as soon as I'm spotted, I generally tend to dive. But while I'm not spotted, there's no reason to do that, and I can just uh, re retain my oxygen supply. Uh, there's one of the helicopters, and we're starting to see some radar pings up ahead. Uh, is it a fast move? It looks like a fast moving circling one. Okay, there's one of the corvettes. Uh, these things are not your primary targets. Uh, unless they're in a chronoplan, these things are going to be really hard to hit. They're not your primary targets. Your primary targets are slow movers, because the slower the ship, the more difficult it is to defend again uh, to dodge torpedoes. Now I'm spotted, so I'm going to start. I'm starting to dive, and I'm just going to. Oh, and there's a, uh, there's a Chinese submarine, so I'm immediately starting to focus that thing. Get torpedoes out, and um, yeah, in 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 this map you're not going to see very much in terms of the ping on the surroundings, just because well, uh, there are, there aren't many. There is some. There is a torpedo incoming. So whatever the carrier was, it is uh, using its helicopter to drop some some torpedoes against me, and there's the carrier spotted. Now the reason you want to deal with carriers is that uh, oh yeah, and the Chinese submarine is starting to shoot at me. It looks like a super cavitating torp, so we've dodged that one, and we have also dodged the carrier torp, and once again in the same manner by just going forwards and backwards. And uh, as soon as, like once the, the torpedo is close, you're trying to accelerate or decelerate to the point where the torpedo is. Um, is is losing its tracking because it has a relatively narrow tracking cone. What you don't want to do is what that submarine over there is doing and sitting bow on towards uh, <laughs> to, towards me <laughs> because he's dead now. And that Queen Elizabeth there is really trying to do something, but Kerry is big. They're slow moving, and uh, they have uh, limited anti-submarine warfare capabilities as long as they're not surfacing. That again is why the O2 capacity is the most important upgrade. And also why I'm, uh, you've seen in, in the fight with the submarine, why I've used both homing torpedoes rather than the super cavitating ones. Uh, they are faster, but um, you, can't, you can only shoot them forwards. And you really, really don't want to be bow in when you're dealing with enemy submarines and torpedoes coming your way, because uh, it's very, very difficult to dodge. Now my O2 is starting to get in the red, but I don't want to surface quite yet. I don't want to run it com completely down, because uh, that would mean that I am... Uh, forced to stay surfaced pretty much for the rest of the game. But I can't su surface right now because the Queen Elizabeth has fighters ha uh, or at attack planes hovering over, over my head. So I am, but I am getting cl as close as I can uh, just to reduce the time, even though that means I'm gonna have to take a torpedo, that reduces the time that my torpedoes have to sail because I wanna sink that thing before I am, okay, she's down now, there's one more torp coming in. I don't think I can still dodge that. Uh, I'm just surfacing up. Oh, no, I dodged it. Okay. Now I'm staying on the surface here because, well, first of all, that's an Ekranoplan. There's no way my torpedoes are going to hit that thing <laughs> because these things can do about 50 knots. But there's also um, there's also another ship. But I do need to recharge my uh, my oxygen. And um, yeah, well, no one's shooting at me, so I might as well just stay on the surface and uh, be ready to to dive if I if I need to. Now I'm sending my torpedoes out against the corvette. But I think he's going to be dead before they get there. So yeah, for the rest of the battle, I'm just going to be torpedo chasing that thing. So there's not very much I can still do. But you've seen what these submarines can do against carriers. Uh, they can occupy interesting positions in, in island nooks. Or um, just generally be reasonably difficult to defend against. Now, if you are in a multi-purpose destroyer that has the grenade launcher slash mortar, anti-submarine mortar uh, equipment, then you can actually kill torpedoes. So you just need to shoot at them and then they blow up. Uh, other destroyers that don't have that can't do that. So if, if you're in a submarine and you do have a very limited amount of torpedoes, because you have nothing else, you only have these torpedoes. Um, and if you're running out, all you can do is ram. And the submarine does 12 knots. <laughs> so, oh, it's shooting at me. I'm gonna go submerge again. Uh, 
but yeah, you, you do have to pick your targets. So try to focus on things that you can deal with that can't easily defend themselves against you. So enemy submarines that are bow in. Uh, aircraft carriers, if you can see them, are prime targets for this thing. Or uh, guided missile destroyers that don't have any anti-submarine defenses are also pretty good targets, especially if they're bow in. Uh, shooting at broadsiding ships is more difficult because of the homing mechanic and the very limited angle that the homing mechanic has. So if something manages to get out of that angle, then uh, there's uh, then your torpedoes are going to miss. But um, so it's it's not it's usually not like 500,000 points of damage that I'm doing in submarines. But I'm quite enjoying the different aspect and the different gameplay that you get in these things. So if that's something you like, and once again, this is the only submarines that actually actually have any cruise missiles. You, you can pick one of the other ones, and then you get the two torpedo launchers plus an actual cruise missile launcher, uh, which I don't know if you can use it while you're underwater. I suspect you can't, although um, uh, submarine launched ballistic missiles can usually be launched from underwater. So. Uh, I'd have to try that out still if that's a thing that actually exists, but it would be pretty cool Because one thing you do occasionally run out as you can see here uh, The battle is still going for three minutes, but I'm out of torpedoes at this point. So uh, you have a limited Damage capacity in these things. It, it's usually enough to deal to deal some severe damage And I mean we've taken out an, an aircraft carrier and an enemy submarine by ourselves And we would have done some more damage if it wasn't the Necronoplan we've been shooting at but um, yeah, there we go, and we've done a total of 200,000. I, I can do 300k uh, reasonably easily, uh, but uh, the monst the sort of monster battles that I can do in a surface ship, uh, not quite with this thing. Still, I, I really enjoy this, and I find it fun to play, and it gives you a really nice uh, Hunt for Red October sort of feel. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye!